Let's talk a little bit about finishing toolpaths. In Mastercam 2020, we've got a brand new finishing toolpath called 3D Blend. It's based on the previous blend toolpath, but it's been completely revamped. Um, it's going to calculate much faster, so it's multi-threads really well. It's going to give you a much better surface finish than previously, and it has a lot of new features such as use of stock, uh, holder checking and collision detection and various other things. Um, and with a blend, what you're doing is basically taking two curves and kind of lofting across, whether you're going up and down or left and right, back and forth. So let's, let's do a blend toolpath on this cheek on Iron Man's helmet, and we'll kind of see how this thing works. So I've got the, uh, the toolpath started. It is a, like I said, it's a blend finishing toolpath. And for the geometry, I've already got the face selected. And you just specify one or more faces of, of what you want to uh, machine. And then for the toolpath control, you'll specify your curves and your containment. But we've got a new option called Silhouette Boundary. And what that does is it takes all your curves and selections and it creates an automatic silhouette to stay within. So the containment is kind of one-click automatic. Uh, with the 2020 version. Now, Silhouette Boundary, you're going to see that in several different toolpaths as well. Um, and like I said, it's just it just simplifies that process. You don't have to go through and grab them all in manually. For the Blend toolpath, it starts from two curves. And I've already got those curves selected. And notice on this one, I kind of went from left to right. Uh, I could have gone top to bottom, but uh, I, you know it seemed a little bit smoother. Uh, so I've got my two chains, that looks good there. Um, and the holder, we're going to have collision detection and avoidance uh, automatically or available now in the blend toolpath. If I turn on collision check, you have two options. You can trim the, the toolpath to avoid gouging or you can tilt. And by tilting, it'll tilt the tool to, to maintain clearance everywhere. Uh, I, if I had a, a roughing tool pass, I could use stock to leave and use that stock. Uh, and then for the cut parameters, I'm going to do zigzag. So it's going to go back and forth. I don't want to go one direction. I got tip compensation set up. I can set my step over. Everything looks good on the step over. And then you can choose whether or not you want to go along or across. In this case, um, it kind of blends normally up and down, which is the same direction as those curves. So I'm going to do it along and uh, let that kind of run through. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. We'll do a little back plot here. And it's gonna equally space out, even though it's, it's kind of a, a curved uh, surface or a tapered surface from end to end, it's gonna very equally space these out and give us a nice clean surface finish. Uh, and then you can decide whether you want kind of a smooth uh, movement on the end or whether you want it to just kick over and start back the other direction. So this blend tool path, uh, definitely take a look at it. It's a, it's a nice new feature and uh, adds a lot of additional new features uh, to that blend tool path, a lot of new capabilities. We see that a lot with tool paths that kind of get redone. They get brought up to the same standards as all the other ones. Another finishing tool path uh, it's not new, uh, scallop and equal scallop, but they've seen a major revamp. So we can now, uh, instead of creating a scallop where it kind of follows the perimeter and, and spirals into the middle, you can have it follow additional curves uh, to kind of control where it's going to move. And we've got different uh, settings for how it's going to offset those curves and uh, it creates a really nice final effect. So let's kind of run through on the back of this helmet and finish out those surfaces. Now if you look, I went ahead and already created a couple curves and then I did a project curve onto these surfaces. And I'm gonna do one of each so you can kind of see the differences. Here's the scallop tool path. And I've got, like I said, the, the geometry is already selected. Um, I've got the silhouette boundary selected, everything's good there, and I'm going to use the closed offset strategy. We'll talk about that in a second, but basically it's offsetting the curve that I've selected ahead of time. Here's the curve that I have, and so it's going to kind of radiate away from the curve and away from the boundaries. 
Closed offsets is going to try to keep everything nice and closed like a traditional scallop uh, would. So when you back plot this, you'll see it's, it's minimizing pickups and it's doing this nice spiral, but it's actually kind of trimming the boundaries of where the, uh, the, the tool path radiates out from the, um, from the edges and from the curve and kind of meeting in the middle, right? Creating that, that traditional scallop look, but driving with that additional uh, influence of that curve. So it creates a really cool look. Um, and on a part where maybe you don't want it to look just exactly like, or it creates kind of a weird finish uh, based on the, the boundary of that part, uh, this gives you a lot more control. Let's do the other side of the helmet. And on the other side of the helmet, uh, we've got uh, the same tool path, but instead of using closed offsets, we're using trimmed offsets. And let's take a look. It's a very different look. Same basic setup, but that one option basically ignores the offset of the boundary and only takes the curve that you've driven from. And that curve is expanded out, and when it hits the boundary, it simply trims that offset. It doesn't close it in, it just trims it. Notice all those yellow lines? Those are all the pickups. So it does a bunch more pickups around the perimeter, but notice there's no pickups in the middle. And the, uh, the curve influence is sort of global. It expands well beyond the boundaries. So it creates a really cool look. Two very different approaches for the exact same setup of that scallop or equal scallop toolpath. But main thing to keep in mind with a scallop toolpath, it does a nice job of getting equal spacing from run to run or from, from uh, uh, pass to pass. And even across parts that have a lot of curvature where the uh, curvature would kind of uh, mess up the spacing if you were just doing a planar surface uh, spacing. Another thing you might want to look at with respect to uh, finishing is deburring. And if you you know spend a lot of time deburring parts and got a lot of external sharp corners, you know, uh, deburring it, it takes a lot of time. It's it's hard to get it very consistent. And with the new deburr tool paths, so these were introduced uh, 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 last year, the year before. Uh, there's some new enhancements in the 3D deburr, but it's a really fast and quick way to deburr your parts in a very repeatable way as well. Um, let's take a look at some of the new options that are available. So the deburr is a multi-axis tool path. And I've got a, a lollipop tool that I've got here. And that way you can kind of cut the top and the bottom. Now the holder is going to be really important because we need to make sure we can fit inside this thing. I want to do the entire part. So just double click it all and say automatically detect all edges within that region. By the way, that's going to take a really long time to detect, but it does a great job. I can exclude areas or check surfaces to make sure I don't run into anything. But uh, basically just set your, your size and the shape. Just tell it how you want to treat internal corners, whether you want it to worry about them or not. Um, determine the tip compensation that you want to use. And then tell it how you want it to go in and clear for the holder, right? Because it's going to do holder checking. You can do clearance to the holder, the shank, and the shoulder. And uh, that five axis tool path or three plus two, depending on how you want to post it, uh, is going to do a great job of getting even into those deep sections. So on this part, uh, I've kind of got it already ready to go and I'll kind of just play that for you. Look at how it does. It's almost poetry, I think, as it goes through and deburrs the inside of this part. Um, and this is a three plus two. You can notice it's doing a nice job of just uh, indexing to a position where it can get all the faces. So if you're not using a 3D deburr, definitely take a look at it. You can do climb or conventional cut on this now, and uh, it's, a, it's a great way to create a really good finished part that doesn't require a lot of secondary effort. One last thing I want to talk about with respect to toolpaths is if you have geometry, let's say you're using geometry in one and it's a, it's a, it's a rough toolpath and you want to take it down to the finished toolpath, if you drag the geometry folder down to another toolpath geometry, you've got a new dialog. 
and you can tell it you want to add that geometry to the existing values or maybe you want to replace it so it's now uh, uh, you copied it the toolpath from something else and now you're replacing the geometry and you've got quite a few uh, options to decide exactly how that geometry is treated in the new position.